Hi everyone, um, Joseph and Ness here from Care Support. Hello. Um, we'll just wait a few minutes um, for other people to uh, to join us. Um, we'll be kicking off pretty shortly. Um, thanks for signing up to attend today. Um, great to have you with us. Um, mm. see some people coming on now so we'll just give it a couple of minutes and uh welcome yeah <laughs> so ness and i are stepping in max usually does max our ceo usually does the the hosting of this but it's uh it's our turn this time around and yes. uh so um bear with us <laughs> it's our first time doing a, uh, a webinar. <laughs> hey, Max, there he is. He's uh, <laughs> nice just name. put a comment in there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Maybe just one more minute, and we'll uh, we'll get going. We'll get going. All right. So we're broadcasting from Bomaderry today. I uh, don't know where you are, uh, where you're watching on from, but very nice weather down here today, Ness. Beautiful, beautiful autumn day. Yes. Mm. Well, yeah, let's make Kick a start. Off. Let's make a start. So, All right. look, thanks for joining us for this webinar um, titled Support Coordination, Opening Doors to New Opportunities. Um, this is the third in our series of monthly webinars. And again, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, just to begin with, I'd like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, um, Auscare support acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. Um, we pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. And the traditional owners on, of the land on which we're hosting today are, are the UN people. Mm. So welcome everybody. Um, just an introduction. Um, my name is Joseph Lyons. I'm the marketing manager um, looking after and managing the support coordination channel of Auscare Support. Um, I've also worked as a support coordinator. Um, so um, I was very happy when the opportunity came up to present on this topic. I think it's a, a fantastic service. And uh, to my right, um, your left, uh, <laughs> Ness Gange, um, one of our support coordinator coaches. Uh, I'll just hand over to Ness to do a bit of a, an introduction sure. for herself. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I have spent a couple of decades in the disability sector, primarily in our state government, the old ADAC, before uh, the NDIS came into play. I've gone to university to do some studies in sport and rec um, and sports science, majoring in people with disabilities and also aged care. And um, yes, once the NDIS came in, um, I finished up with ADAC and went out into the industry as a support coordinator and um, spent a couple of years out there doing that and then now working as a support coordinator coach with Auscare. Thanks, Ness. Mm -hmm. um, look, the uh, the nature of these webinars is that we do like them to be interactive. So if you've got any questions along the way, um, please add them in the comments section below. Um, our other support coordinator coach, Joe McIntyre, who's based uh, on the far north coast, is uh, going to be responding to any comments that come through as we go along. And at the end of the uh, the webinar, um, we'll address any other questions that we haven't been able to answer um, to that point. Mm -hmm. So for those unacquainted with Auscare support, um, we're a national provider of um, support coordination, um, plan management. We have a partnership with Mabel um, that enables our clients to connect with locally, uh, fully insured, comprehensively uh, local people to help them um, meet their uh, objectives and goals in their, in their plans. And our budget builder service as well, um, which is specifically being designed to ensure that participants fully utilise their, their funding and to maximise their, their plans and achieve their goals also. Um, they don't overspend or underspend. Um, so that's a, a new service we launched earlier this year. Um, we will be sending out an easy to read guide on support coordination. 
um, later on uh, today after the webinar. Um, that'll provide and touch on a lot of the points that we address here in, in the webinar. Um, and if there's any other questions, anything specific to your own individual circumstances, we just ask that you either send us a direct message or you um, email um, our, uh, well, I think Ness, um, Ness would be the good person to send it to. So um, vanessa.gange um, at auscaresupport.com.au. Um, we'll put that up in the comments for you just so you can see that and follow up on that later on if you wish. Mm -hmm. um, so we currently provide support coordination in uh, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia, but we are experiencing rapid growth. There's been such a high demand for support coordination services. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're looking at expanding into all states and territories in, uh, in the short term. Um, and we'll sort of touch on that a little bit later on as well. But I, I guess getting back to the essence of what this webinar is all about. Um, Ness, can you just provide an overview of what support coordination is and um, three different levels? Sure. Um, essentially, support coordination has been set up to assist participants to um, implement their um, goals in their plans. Um, it really is about building capacity for the participant. Um, so really, it's a we come in for a shorter period of time or like a, the length of a plan with the idea that moving forward, you're able to then have the skill set or capacity to then self manage your own plan. Um, certainly, there are cases where people don't want to do that and they prefer to have somebody on standby to support them through their ongoing process. So it is about choice, control, um, identifying appropriate uh, providers, people that you feel comfortable with, with your coordinator at the helm of that to introduce you to that, that range of um, stakeholder um, providers really. Um, so we are there as a connector um, and like, help with you build capacity with those providers. So moving forward, we can step back and you can move forward. Um, we do have three levels. The first one is support connection. So that is a level one support coordination function. Um, that's for people that just need a little bit of guidance, a little bit of support um, to understand the plan and uh, you know, their, their goals and how they might be moving forward to achieve them. Um, the support coordination, that is another, that's the level two. And so that's for people that have higher like complex support needs. Um, and that is, I guess, a, a, it's more challenging work there. Um, you're dealing with complex situations, issues as they arise, crises at times. Um, so people that need a little bit more support for a little bit longer to get uh, where they want to with their plan and, and, and to develop that independence, um, not dependence on us. That's really important. We are about propping you people up and so that for you able to move forward and, and um, have that control over the, you know, the way mm. that the plan is implemented. Definitely. Um, the specialist support coordination, that's the level three. Um, that's for people that um, have a particular point of crisis, if you like. You often get support coordination and specialist support coordination. Specialist support coordination will only be for a very limited amount of time. So it could be a particular issue around housing, um, there could be child protection or health, education. So a specialist support coordinator will come on board that has um, really broad expertise, knowledge, um, qualifications around that particular area that um, you require support with. And it's generally like, a, as I say, like a, um, a very short sort of in and out just to deal with that particular issue whilst the support coordinator can focus on um, the rest of the, the plans and the goal. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, mm. we provide predominantly level two and level three, but certainly have capacity to provide the, the level one as well, which is really just as important. Yeah, definitely. And so look, about a third, I think about 33% of um, NDIS participants um, receive support coordination funding. Um, for those people interested in um, looking at uh, applying to have support coordination, it's really vital that when you're meeting with your planner, you really state clearly why you believe that that you need it. it, it it's um, really important to gather that information. And, mm. and basically at that point, there's really four different categories that, that you know, the planner will look at. And it, 
it's your individual disability. Um, so if you have difficulties with communication um, or you have complex support needs, um, your social situation as well is very important. So if you don't have a, a large network of informal, mm. um, formal mainstream supports, um, support coordination would be very, very helpful for you in that situation. Um, limited experience, um, looking for, searching for, engaging um, providers. Um, and understanding your budget as well. Uh, it's very important that you have an understanding of your budget and support coordination is a great service that, that provides you with um, information that's vital to you receiving the services that you need within the budget that you have. And also your personal situation. So if you're brand new to the NDIS or you, know, you have cultural or, or language barriers, um, support coordination can also be um, looked upon as a service that could be helpful to you. So it's really vital at that point when you're sitting down with the planner to, to highlight those, those points. I think, sorry, Joseph, mm. I was just going to say, I think it's important too that um, support coordinator function also help build informal networks as well with mm. mainstream services, that sort of thing. So, yeah. and try and move away from specialised services where, where possible. Um, so that's also another function that, you know, would be a great benefit to people. Mm. Definitely. So, I mean, main benefits is just being able to connect, um, build capacity. Um, and just ensure that you're utilising your plan and getting the most out of it. Yep. And I, I guess that the idea for the, the topic of this webinar was what does support coordination do? And it mm -hmm. really does open doors to, to new opportunities. And um, mm -hmm. for those who follow us on, on social media, you would have seen some videos that we, we released a little while ago that highlighted some, some clients and their journey. Uh, throughout the NDIS and um, Ness, one of those clients you um, used to have um, was a support coordination mm -hmm. client. Could you just share a little bit of information about Linda and Logan? Sure. Uh, so Logan is in primary school um, and lives with his mother, Belinda. Um, and when I first met them, there were all sorts of complexities around Logan's behaviour at school, at home. Um, Belinda, mum, was incredibly overwhelmed. She was exhausted. Um, really, the first NDIS plan had come into play, but um, Belinda didn't really understand what was open for Logan, what the opportunities were, what it meant, what the goals meant, how to go about achieving them. Um, so I worked with Logan and Belinda um, essentially to make sure that we collated um, enough evidence around the supports that were required for Logan. That was the other thing, sorry. His plan was um, really quite low on the funding at the time and was not going to meet his needs. So we um, went about getting the necessary assessments, the necessary information, the evidence, whilst also starting to implement people that he would start to feel comfortable with. Um, purchasing things like, you know, a bike for him to start riding around on the street safely um and you know things that little opportunities for him that he had never experienced um being a child basically because he had a disability um and then another big thing that came from that was that belinda was actually finally able to get some respite um some overnight respite so she had an opportunity to go away um and now i mean logan has been winning awards at school he's back at school on a on a permanent basis um and Belinda is just, she's so, I just, I guess, just happier. She mm. she feels lighter. Uh, when I first met with her, she was quite reserved, I think, because of previous experiences. Um, and, you know, it, it is a really hard sort of maze to, to get through, really. Um, so that's what we, what my work with them did, and, and they're flourishing. They're really good. Really yeah. Great. Yeah. And they definitely are. And I had the opportunity to go down and meet them as well. And it was really great to see, you know, what goals have been achieved since having um, support coordination and, and Ness and the team helping her and, and Logan out. And um, another story that was shared with me recently um, by Deborah Simpson, she's one of our support coordinators on the, um, the far north coast, was about a... Uh, a participant called Shane and, and Shane received support coordination and plan management um, services from us. Um, one of the goals in Shane's plan was to become more active in the community. He was a very shy man, um, loved his music. Um, he hadn't had, um, it wasn't really a good fit with his support worker or workers that were working with him previously. And um, Deborah was able to connect um, Shane with a uh, support worker called Horace 
And um, Horace was also a musician in quite a well-known Australian band. And so they were a great fit. They hit it off straight away. <laughs> and one of their first outings was to a, a country music live session um, somewhere up there on the far north coast. And um, uh, Horace introduced Shane to um, the band who was playing that day. And uh, Horace was actually booked to play at that band's wedding or two of the members of that band's wedding. And oh um Horace invited Shane to to come along and play that day and um he did and his mother Shane's mother was basically saying you know up until when when Horace came on board you know Shane was you know he wouldn't say boo basically um but before Horace came to pick him up that day to go out to the wedding he was there practicing his guitar and uh, he was very excited uh, he went out there did a great job great performance and um Horace has also introduced Shane to another young man with an interest in music as well. So they're getting together for, for jam sessions and forming a friendship. And I guess it's just another example of, um, you know, the benefits of support coordination and, you know, how um, Shane's been able to exercise choice and control over, mm -hmm. over his plan. So um, stories like that, I guess, really sort of highlight what those new opportunities are. Um, so, um, yeah, look, it's um, great stories. And if, if you're following us on social media, you'll be seeing a lot more stories like that, both in video and, and article format and perhaps even um, podcasts as well. So um, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> um, so um, I guess what we're trying to get across here is um, there's so many benefits to support coordination. There are a lot of support coordination providers out there, but why... Would you choose Auscare support? What what is it about Auscare support that makes us um, different? I guess from day one, our mission has been to empower you know um, greater futures for our our clients and their families. We're we're very um, client centric. Um, we're very contactable. Um, when you're um, linked with one of our support coordinators, you can reach them on their mobile. You can reach them via direct um, email and they're very, very responsive, our team. Um, we take a very, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we are so accessible and um, of the high level standards that we hold for um, the service delivery. Um, as far as the, um, you know, the, the tools and the benchmarks of high quality that, that we really insist upon at, at Auscare Support is that um, we have a, a very extensive onboarding um, process for our new support coordinators, which involves a lot of systems training, a lot of policies, procedures, um, so that everybody is across exactly and up to date with everything that's happening in the NDIS. Um, coupled with that is that um, Auscare has partnered with DSC, who's the leading training consultancy organisation in, in the uh, disability sector. And all of our support coordinators go through and complete ongoing um, professional training modules on a variety of different um, topics. Um, I remember this is a story that Max told me um, a little while ago now, and we've, we've written about it before, but um, I guess Auscare support is not a not for profit organisation. And, I think a lot of the commentary around um, other organisations like us in the in the marketplace is that we're, we're KPI driven, um, but that can't be further from the truth. In fact, um, we we set uh, like a, a number of clients that any support coordinator can manage at any given time. Um, we really believe in upholding the high level service standards that we've become um, renowned for and that we take great pride in. Um, so. Um, that, that is very carefully managed and, and monitored um, so that everybody, every single client that we have is um, receiving the, the, the same level um, of service. Mm. And further to that, um, in July 2020 is another show of commitment to this high level service standard um, to support coordinator coaches. I've already, well, this is right here and Joe's um, responding to comments right now online, were appointed. Um, and. Um, that was really to provide our, our growing network of support coordinators with um, extensive um, experience that, you know, Joe and Ness have accumulated over the years in terms of complex issues and anything really that our support coordination team might need assistance with. And I might just pass over to you now, Ness, just to explain a little bit more about that role. Sure. Um, so Joe and I both have a, um, a team of support coordinators each. And our primary function is to provide support, guidance, advice to those people um, coming you know, tricky situations. Um, and I guess working remotely 
um, is a challenge in itself and we know support coordination, the role is a challenge in itself as well. So I think what's unique to Auscare for us is that, you know, we get together on a regular basis through um, weekly coffee and chat. Um, we have monthly meetings where everyone comes on board um, and we really try and um, get people to feel like they're part of a team, really, even if you're not sitting, sitting next to somebody. Um, and you know, we've got people on the ground, um, locals, we don't do sort of remote support coordination. And I think the thing too about us is that we have always got somebody covered. So if a support coordinator needs to go on leave or they fall sick or they leave, whatever, then one of the team or myself or Joe will actually pick up and, and continue on with that person. So no one's ever sort of left in the lurch. Um, we've, we've, you know, basically we've got their backs really, yeah. so to speak. Um, and I think that's really important too, is that we often do feedback like 360 surveys mm -hmm. with our support coordinators and the feedback that we get is always really, really positive about Auscare. Um, it's continuous improvement all the time. Um, and everyone's got to say, we all work together and, you know, because we're always in a shifting environment, mm -hmm. it's really important that you know, communication channels are open, everyone has an equal say and, and, you know, we move forward and we're dynamic and we're constantly changing to suit the climate, the demand, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a wonderful place to work. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, that's all the feedback that I get too, Ness. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's um, really demonstrated on, you know, some of the other videos we've, we've put out online about, you know, our mission and, and our team. And mm -hmm. you can see those on um, YouTube and Facebook and, and, and LinkedIn and to learn a little bit more about our, our culture and mission. Yep. But it's, it's integral to everything that we do here and it drives everything that we do in terms of service delivery for support coordination mm -hmm. and all of our other services as well. And we do, mm -hmm. we do have a fairly robust recruitment process now mm -hmm. so that we are really targeting or aiming for those people that do have ex extensive experience, do understand disability. The majority of, I think, our coordinators have lived experience mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're really coming from a, a, you know, dealing with having people that can respond appropriately and that at, at a level that's required to become, like, be efficient, really. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That kind of segues into something um, with regards to opportunities for experienced support coordinators to work with us. Um, mm. Did you want to talk a little bit more about that, Ness, um, in terms of the the demand for support coordination and you know mm. we're, we're growing quite rapidly yeah um just a little bit about how anyone here would, would be interested in looking at becoming a support coordinator because i know we've got a mix of people here on on the uh the webinar yep and, yep oh well um yeah. we're always looking to expand as as joseph just said we um we're growing i think the the need for support coordination is becoming more apparent and so more and more people are asking for it as well. Um, so our support coordinators, whilst they're independent contractors, they're still under the banner of Auscare. Um, so you get the, the sort of <laughs> the balance of being able to work flexibly, um, when you work, when you want to work with as many people as you like. Um, and, you know, the ongoing training as, as you alluded to mm. before, mm. Um, and we're always, you know, looking for great, wonderful people to come and join our team. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we've got, um, where is it, the landing page? Yeah. Yes. So we've created a, a support coordination recruitment landing page, and that's just ozcaresupport.com forward slash SC recruitment. We'll put that up in the comments as well. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got a number of areas that we're, we're looking at. I think ACT, Blacktown mm. and the far north coast of New South Wales, but much broader than that as well. But if yep. you go to the landing page and you're interested in that, um, then all of those details are there as well. Mm. Um, and one of the, the biggest questions we get from um, current participants um, in, in the space um, is can you can you change support coordinators? Are you with a support coordinator that you, you're not entirely happy with? Mm -hmm. And again, it, it's all about that choice and control. Yep. And um, look, it is a it is um, quite an easy process. It, it's basically if you're unhappy with your current provider, you can call um, your um, new support coordinator who you want mm -hmm. um, to support coordinate you. Um, advise them that you want to you know 
take over. Um, and then you have that conversation. Um, if everything is um, agreed to and, and yep. both parties are happy, it's really just a matter of the, the new support coordinator, and we hope that's Oscare support, um, <laughs> can advise uh, the other support coordinator um, that uh, the participant has decided to switch providers. And, um, you know, the new support coordinator um, will then go and advise all of your other service providers mm -hmm. that they are now the new support coordinator. So it is relatively seamless. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, it's it's all about um, you know choice and control. Um, you know, from our own experience and our team's experience, we've we've all personally seen um, the new opportunities that have been opened as a result of support coordination for a lot of our a lot of clients, a lot of NDIS participants. And um, yeah, if you have a look at some more of the stories that sort of really give that first hand insight, um, yeah, please check out our videos and stories on on uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So I think that's all we uh, had to cover today. Um, let's just see if there's any other questions here that have come up. Um, let's see down here. Okay. There so I think Joe has been responding to uh, a lot of these. Where are we? And thanks again for making this interactive. That's what we always like to try and do with mm -hmm. these sessions. Um, and um, yeah, Joe's been very busy there. <laughs> no, look, that's great. Um, a mix of things there. Um, I think Brian. Um, mm -hmm. Brian, I think you're. Uh, hang on. Okay, I'm needing a support coordinator to manage my 52 year old son's NDIS plan. Um, I've done it for the past two years, but I'm now finding it difficult. Mm -hmm. I do have low vision. It takes me time to read everything and then to understand it. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And um, that's something that we would absolutely be able to manage um, or support, I should say. Um, so maybe if uh, we're putting up my we're putting up my email address. Yeah, we'll put that up so you can um, have that that conversation again. Um, it's difficult to sort of comment on individual circumstances, mm -hmm. um, but we're quite happy if you um, send a, an email through to uh, Vanessa or just send a direct message to this page. Um, we'll certainly um, address that, Brian, and thanks again for your um, question. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, Lisa. Uh, so as a KPI-driven business, are your services more expensive? Well, we're not, we're not actually a KPI-driven business. Um, no. And so our services are in line with the NDIS price guide for support coordination, the different levels. Mm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we don't actually have the, the KPI. Yeah. Happening, do we? No, we don't. And again, it's it's one of those, I think it's a perception in yeah. the marketplace about commercial businesses who provide these services. But for us particularly, um, yeah, we carefully manage how many, um, or the caseload of each support coordinator very carefully um, to ensure those high standards are always met. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, oh, there's your email yep. address. Oh, it's just um, yeah, the E goes before the A, I think, in that. Um, uh, yes. That email address, so uh, yeah, Vanessa Ginge at support dot com. Day, that's okay. Married. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, any other questions um, uh, before we sign off today? Who is the Cos team leader? Oh, so we've got myself and Joe. Um, so we support our coordinators. Coordinators, I should say. Yeah. Um, and do you have the ability to take on more clients? Yes. Mm -hmm. If so, how does one contact the COS team? Mm. So we should put our intake number yeah, up, we'll do um, that. for Francine, the 1800 number. Yeah, so that's 1800 940 515. And um, the intake email address is intake at oscaresupport.com.au. Uh, Mandy, we'll get that those details up for you as well. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Okay. See if we've missed anything here. Um, no, I think Joe's onto it or we've yeah. addressed it. So, look, thanks very much again for joining us today. Um, and uh, we'll be following up with an email or a post on social media um, to send you through our easy to read guide to support coordination. Um, and if you have any other questions specific to your own individual circumstances, yeah, by all means, please direct message this page, um, email uh, Vanessa and for any intake inquiries, um, yeah, please uh, email intake at oscaresupport.com.au.
Okay, beautiful. All right, everyone. Thanks again. And thanks to Joe up there responding to all of those comments. And um, we look forward to seeing you at another webinar soon. And just, Joe, can you just put the correct email address up for me, please? Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Everyone. Bye, Bye for now.